single body on here. I am going to have my, I guess, a snack before my brunch. I already had my coffee. And what else? Oh, a quick thing before I get into the video is somebody commented in my uh, sink wire video. How is it holding up? Let me show you. See this? This is where I put my phone now. And it's still holding up really, really nicely, you guys. So I just wanted to show y'all real quick. It's still holding up very nicely. Okay. Now to get into the video. I titled the video Full Time if I can talk, right? Full-time van life. So, here's the news report on that. I plan on going full-time again. I've been wanting to do this for a while. As you guys, most of you guys already know. I'll try to block, block the sun off the, the phone for just a smidge. All right, hopefully that works. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing wonderful. Oh my God, I'm so thirsty. Okay. So, news report to the nitty gritty. <laughs> it's not that crazy. I have been wanting to go back to full-time van life for quite a while now. I don't even know how long it's been. Mm, a few weeks, a few months, I've been talking about, thinking about going back to full-time van life for a while. For how long? I don't know. I have no idea. Until uh, I wanna do something else. Whether it be go back to sticks and bricks find a very small travel trailer park it somewhere buy some land i do want a home base of my own that's a that's a given guarantee a decision that i made for sure home base i need a home base i want a home base but in the meanwhile i have decided to go back to full-time van life i can travel I'm not the type that is going to be traveling every little, all over the U.S. I stick to my my places, my routes. I like to go to, um, to Cali, obviously. And then I'll be going around Oklahoma and Texas. That's mainly where I go. But most of the, the summer, spring, summer, and fall-ish, I probably will be in California. The rest of the time, winter time, I will be in Texas. And that's what's going to happen, you guys. So starting next month, I will be officially a full-time van life. So that's going to be perfect. About a week or so, I will pack all this up. Well, you can't see nothing. I will pack everything that I have from my RV what I have left, pack it in the back of my van, take it to uh, my storage unit, and then figure how I want to set up my van. And I'm thinking it's going to be more towards the extreme minimalist setup that I have showed you guys before. Uh, of course, I'm going to add a little bit more to it because now I will be living full time in my van, but I want the least amount of things in my van still to be comfortable for me, for my necessities, for my wants, for my taste. So I will be showing you, once I set it up, I'll show you an actual tour of what the frugal minimalist van life looks for me. So that's about it, you guys. I am happy to announce that I will be going from RV life to van life. Mm -mm -mm. 
it's no time like today. So I know I keep thinking about the get busy living or get busy dying. So I keep thinking about it over and over and over and over about wanting to go back to full time. And what's stopping me? Me, just me, just deciding to just leap and do it. So now that I have finally made that decision, next month we'll start the official full-time van life. So that's all I wanted to share you guys. That's it. Uh, I'm really excited. A little bit nervous, a little bit excited, but mostly excited. I'm happy. I get to have my, my freedom, my privacy, be as social as I want, be as cooped in here as I want. I don't know. I'm going to have to find a job. Plus, keep this YouTube going, growing, and then eventually I can afford to travel more once I grow the YouTube some more. But until then, hit that like button, share my videos, let the ads play for a little bit so I could get a little few cents, a few cents <laughs> every time you watch a video, a few cents out of two, a few dollars, you know. So that, that gives me some gas money, that gives me some coffee money, that gives me um, uh, cell phone money <laughs> to keep, keep these videos going and show you my adventures. So thank you for that. Oh my goodness. I've been so thirsty. With these allergies, I can't seem to breathe out of my nose very well at night. And I have my mouth open, TMI, but my mouth gets super dry. And oh my goodness, it's just like, I'm so thirsty. Good morning, Kathy. So today's video is about me going back to full-time van life uh, next, next month. Basically bordering um, end of this month to the next month. That's what the video is. I will be officially full-time van lifing again. I'm pretty excited. Just a teeny bit nervous just because I'm gonna go full-blown again. And I just decided like officially to go full-time van life this past week. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I keep talking about it. I keep wanting to do it. I'm just gonna do it. Just do it because what do, what do I have to lose? Fun, adventure, experience, <laughs> travel. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, so that's what I will be doing. I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, I was sharing on here, Kathy, that I think the, the setup that I'm gonna go with once I repack everything take it to my storage unit in Oklahoma, drop everything off, and then take a day or two to kind of set up my van exactly how I want it. I'm still like, ooh, what do I want to take? What don't I want to take? I want to take my big battery, but I don't have the solar up upstairs. Why did I think upstairs? Up at the top of my, my minivan roof. So that's going to be an issue to recharge that. I want to take it, but... I, luckily I have two smaller batteries and I'm going to take those two smaller batteries with me and just kind of work off of that. So the only thing I will need to power, obviously to recharge my phone, I will need to be able to use my hot pot um, to kind of just heat up, heat up leftovers, heat up soup, whatever. So maybe once or twice a day, I might need it for five, 10, 15 minutes. But my main thing is going to be for my fridge. So I'm going to have my two smaller batteries, keep everything else in storage, keep the very basic, basic necessities, get Planet Fitness again. I've heard controversial, controversial if I can say that word, <laughs> about Planet Fitness here lately. Uh, yeah, Cora, Cora mentioned some stuff about Planet Fitness and she says not to get it, get a different gym. But I'm like, girl... It's the cheapest and 
kind of everywhere, just about everywhere for my necessity. So I'm gonna have to go with Planet Fitness for a little while anyway. Mm. I really wasn't that hungry this morning, but now that I'm eating the banana, I'm like, ooh, I want some more. So yes, it's official, it's official. Woo! <laughs> I still have a mess back here. Let's see. All your setups were great. You gave me lots of ideas. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, each setup has something like really cool about it. There's some that obviously needs improvement. And then it's going to depend on your necessity, where you live, where you're at, to what your necessities are, um, what your likes, dislikes, hobbies, what you're interested in, where you're parking, where you're living, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it just depends, you know, on you specifically how you're gonna set it up. Because some people love to have a ton of clothes. Some people can wear the same thing over and over. Obviously not like your undergarments, right? But like your outer layer. I typically wear my outer layers at least a couple days in a row. So I don't need as much clothing. And then um, as far as like my, my kitchen, I try to keep that to a minimum. What do I hoard? Not a lot these days. A lot of my prep stuff, a lot of my uh, sticks and bricks type of stuff. I still, I kept everything. I didn't have very much, but I kept everything. And it's in storage. But what do I need to live in the van comfortably? Not very much. Not very much. Because I will be, more often than none, I will be going to McDonald's, sitting down, enjoying my coffee for the day if I don't feel like making my coffee in here. And then just depends what I end up getting as far as a job, my schedule. I'll be looking for another part-time job and depending on my hours and my days, um, I'll make sure not to work on Sundays so I can do the live stream with you guys because I enjoy that. Oh my goodness. But other than that, I'm open, open schedule work a few days a week mornings evenings doesn't matter and get some kind of income going there so i got to keep my my gas my gas going my insurance my vehicle maintenance food cell phone <laughs> y'all know how it is basic necessities you got to keep that going so that's what i will be doing but as far as my layout i won't keep hardly anything in here and I know some people will be like, well, I mean, there's no way you live in that because <laughs> you don't have anything. You don't have 20 pots and pans. You don't have 10,000 pieces of clothing. You don't have, there. there's no way. Well, there is a way. Most of my stuff will be in storage. It is what it is. I don't want to get rid of it. And I have a cheap storage unit, which is about 60-ish bucks a month. And I'm okay with paying that for now until I can save up enough and figure out where I want my home base, what I want and move my things there, I will have a storage unit. So let me see what you put. I'm thinking I'm gonna put my bed across the back. I'm only 5'1", here about my, my height. Cool, I'm 5'2", and a quarter. <laughs> um, <laughs> five one on a good day. Will leave me some space for the dogs. I meant to ask you about the trifold. Is it comfy? I usually sleep on my side. It is comfortable. It's a bit more firm than I like. I like like super squishy, almost like if you were to be sleeping on a super squishy pillow. That's what I like. If you, some people like it a bit more firm and they can't do soft. Like my mom, she can't do like a soft. She says her, her body hurts. She has to have it more firm. And for her, the, the trifold was awesome. She likes that. For me, I put the trifold and then I put the, the extra toppers on top. And then it feels really, really comfortable for me. But it is comfortable. It is comfortable. If you're, I, I'm a, slight, a side sleeper as well. But I like my bed super soft. So if you like your bed super soft, then you might add a bit more foam to it. Or get something that is more um, more thicker. Instead of the, the four inch, you can get like a six inch or an eight inch, just depending on your comfort. 
it just depends, you know, but it is overall, it is comfortable. What I do like is that you can actually cut the foam, the one of the trifolds and make it shorter. That way you're not wasting, because we're only like five foot, right? So I cut one of the trifold uh, squares, I cut that in half. And most of the time I will take part of that piece off. So it makes it like a whole foot shorter. And I still feel, I still feel perfectly. So that's what I do to give me more, more space in the van. What I did like to do, except for like, when it was really cold, I never had issues when it was warm. When the weather was warm, I had no issues, but when it was cold, somehow my body heat, condensation, outside being cold, all that in the mix, I was collecting the moisture on my cot. And I try to avoid mold, so you either have to air it out every every day or just do without the cot for winter. I don't know why I had issues, but typically I like to put the cot, my trifold and my foam on top, and that is perfect. It gives you some storage at the bottom and however many layers you want of comfort on top of that, perfect, perfect. Buenos dias, buenos dias. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, it's just, that's what I would do. And I'm definitely keeping my kitchenette. I'm keeping a small fridge. I think for the very beginning of this, I will keep the smallest fridge that I have. And if I feel that I need more more fridge space, then once I go back to um, the Oklahoma, Texas area, I will swing by my storage unit and swap out to my bigger fridges. One of my bigger fridge, probably the really big one that I just recently got. If I feel that I need more, more fridge space for van life. Um, typically I will be around a city, a big city. I will have, uh, I keep thinking McDonald's guys. <laughs> I will have access to Walmart grocery stores, tons of them, tons of them. So I can go shopping every two to three days without a problem. I don't need a super huge fridge. The day or the time that I will need the big fridge is when I go, um, to Quartzsite. That's when I will want to take my big fridge so I can like stock up and fridge and freezer because it's a dual uh, dual zone, I guess you call it. Then I will stock up. I will take that with me and then I don't have to go shopping. I can pre-shop, have everything that I need there for the week or two, however long I decide to stay. And that will be perfect. But other than that, I'm going to take the very small 15 quart um what was that all power set power fridge i think it's set power <laughs> i get all those companies mixed up all those names mixed up they all sound so familiar so similar um but yeah other than that i'm not keeping very much at all and then the plan is either to get to start looking saving obviously looking for a very small travel trailer that i can pull with this um minivan because I cannot afford to upgrade into a huge RV, which kind of sucks. And in a way it's kind of good because I don't really want to take care of a huge RV. <laughs> I'd rather have something small. That or look for another sticks and bricks. But I don't know. I'm not ready for any of that yet. I just want to enjoy the full-time van life for a while. Whether it be six months, a year, five years. I don't know how long it'll be, but... For now, I will be enjoying full-time van life and just living and enjoying very, very simple, minimal lifestyle. That's going to be nice. That's going to be really nice. I always wanted to be an extreme minimalist, which I am not. I have too much. I have too much to be called an extreme minimalist. But that's, that's something that I always wanted to 
to be an extreme minimalist. I just can't. I can't. The the pr the the frugal the frugal and prepper in me. It's like I I need to get more. I need to get more just in case. Um, as a backup, because you just never know. You need more. You need more things. You need more preps. You need blah blah blah. So that that's what stops me in my brain. Like I need more of a stockpile than three pieces of underwear and two changes of clothes and a blanket and a pillow. Like I need more than that. <laughs> I can't do extreme minimalist, but minimalism, yes. I have I have enjoyed that. So definitely. Um so my goal is to go with Cora. Hopefully my allergies aren't too bad where I can make it past June. So from next month to past June when the baby's born, I can stay with her near her around her however it works out and then help her out for a week two three weeks however long she needs me to kind of help her out and adjust to new mommy life and then from there if my allergies are horrible then I will head back west for a few months until they die down about October November time and then head back to to Texas and spend the holidays with Cora and then once my allergies kick back on springtime, come back to to the West Coast and enjoy the West Coast life until fall time again. And then go with Cora for the holidays. Same thing, same thing, over and over and over. That's my plan. So maybe i will venture out into different areas and kind of show you but those are for sure my routes my guarantee places that i'm going to be going back and forth which i do now anyway but those are the the places i will go cali to texas texas to cali back and forth mm -mm -mm. well thank you guys for the thumbs up so yeah I'm just really excited. I don't have anything to show you because it's, it's not time for, for full time. I have a mess back here. I've been doing some videos, some sponsored videos, some regular videos. Um, yeah, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. And I won't be able to fix anything until after I move everything to the storage unit. Then I can set it up. Until then, I can't really show you any kind of setup. I don't have anything there. I've been sleeping in the RV the past two, three weeks, however long it's been. I've been back in the RV for a while. It's been getting too hot here in the desert. We were in the 90s, close to 100 for quite a few days. And then it's supposed to drop back down to, what is it, like 70s, 80s, but basically 90s and up. It's, it's getting too, too much, too crazy, too hot in the van. So I've been going inside the RV here lately. But yeah, you guys, I'm like, I'm so excited. I want it to happen now. <laughs> I want to show you guys now everything, my setup, my day in the life, my vlogs. So I don't know how how that would work. Should I do more like vloggy, once a week videos plus my live stream showing you like what I did the whole week? I've been thinking about doing more like that, more vloggy videos, taking like bits and pieces of my life every day, putting it together on film and make a 10 20 30 minute video for the week post it like on maybe the middle of the week on wednesdays and then do my live streams on sundays what do you guys think about that let's see teresa hi teresa congrats on making your decision 
<laughs> yeah, that excites me for sure. I agree with you on the get busy. <laughs> get busy living. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man, it's like the older I get, the the faster time goes. The faster time goes, the older I get. Every single day just seems to just go, 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 go. And I don't want to have to look back and be like, damn, I should have I should have done this 10 years ago. I should have done this five years ago. Oh man, why didn't I do this earlier? I don't want to have to say that when when I'm older. I'm like, man, I could have actually enjoyed the last 20 years of my life doing what I wanted instead of just talking about it. So that's what I'm going to be doing, you guys. I'm going to definitely be, even if it, I have sucky days <laughs> doing the van life. It's It's like with anything. Even sticks and breaks, even the wealthy people, the poor people, it doesn't matter. We all have crappy days. It is what it is. But as long as you're doing what you enjoy the majority of the time, that's where you need to be. Kathy says, that sounds good, Dia. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing for sure. For sure. I just keep kind of daydreaming of what am I going to put in here? What am I going to do? <laughs> I still want a tiny house. I still want um, the minivan life. I still, I still want a travel trailer. I want off grid land. I want grid land. I want all kinds of things. <laughs> when I start daydreaming, it's like, I want, I want to do everything. I want it all. I want to do everything. But once you start breaking it down, and okay, well, to have a regular sticks and breaks for my home base, like, how's, how will that work out? Well, either I rent it out or I have to have the funds to keep it going, maintaining it, um, lawn maintenance, upkeep, all the expenses that go with it, and then go travel. I don't want to deal with that. So if I have some kind of home base... It will be where, maybe where Core is at in the future, and I can park a little travel trailer, and that's my, my home base. Or eventually, I will buy some more rural land and park my, my travel trailer there, and I can go wherever I need to, and then go back whatever time of year I decide to, to live in my travel trailer. Or I will have a tiny travel trailer that is cheap enough, um, like the RV lot is cheap enough to be able to afford to park it there all year and I can just go back to it whenever I want. Or another option is just to put it in storage with all my things in there, pull it out whenever I feel like taking a break from van life and doing the travel trailer RV life. And then go park it at an RV park for a few months until I decide, okay, I had enough. I'm ready to hit the road with my van again. And then go put it in storage for, I don't know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it's going to cost me. So I'm thinking in the long run, for a while, this is not my end game. This is not once I get older and um, I'm retired or like at that retirement age, right? Then that might change a little bit i don't know but for the next foreseeable future i think the option of looking for a small travel trailer that i can live periodically however long i want to live throughout the year in the travel trailer and then take my adventures in um in the van that's a good combination for me i think that's a good combination for a lot of you guys have your home, whatever you choose it to be, an apartment, a travel trailer, a regular house, renting a room, whatever fits your needs and your wants and your likes, dislikes, you know, it's up to you. And then having a vehicle to go adventure a few weeks, a few months out of the year. I think that's perfect. There's a dang fly in here. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I have the windows cracked. <laughs> My goodness. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. 
Kathy says, I can't tell you how many times I could have kicked myself in the butt for not starting, um, not starting some form of van life earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's difficult because you're taking care of your mom right now, but definitely, I mean, even just going to a campground, if you have, you know, once, twice a year, even go enjoy something, go take a weekend trip and like de-stress and just relax in nature. Do you go do a hobby, something? I don't know. It's easier said than done when you got, you know, certain circumstances, but definitely once, twice a year, once a month, depending on, you know, what you can, can't do. Start doing something, start doing something. Even just to kind of test the waters and I don't know if where you're going to go camping, if you're going to be going to somewhere rural, if you're going to be staying at an RV park, if you want to do like street parking, discreet stealth parking, if you're the type that wants to try um, more stealth in the city, take a, a day and take your car and set it up and then go try it go sleep somewhere and see what you feel like go try it for a couple days in a row a day just to see if that's what you want to do if you're the type that wants to go to like an rv park a national park then take a weekend and go to a national park and then do that you know every few months every six months whatever it be you know Go do that. Go experience it. Little bits at a time. Little bits at a time. And then you'll start to get familiar with it. You won't be so nervous, so scared to do it. Because at first it is. It's kind of scary. It's nervous. It's like anxiety. Like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I don't know what to do. But the only way you're going to know how it is and what to do and if it's for you is to just go out and do it. Go out and do it and try it and see if you like it. And everything won't be perfect. <laughs> Even for the experience, camper, glamper, it, nothing is perfect. We still have issues. We don't have like full access to everything, especially in a car or a van. You don't have your your regular amenities. So, you know, try it. Try it. Teresa says, all living arrangements have pros and cons. You can try one thing. Yeah, exactly. You try one thing for a while, then try another way. You have many options. Exactly. That's why I'm always switching the stuff around here. And then for my personality, it seems to be, I've, I've caught on to how I work now. <laughs> About every six-ish months or so, I want to do something different. Living in a sticks and bricks, about six months. Living in an RV for about another six months. Living uh, in the vehicle for about another six months. So it just seems like six-ish months for me. Or living in a certain area and then moving somewhere else. I don't know why, but like the six-month mark, thereabouts, not exactly, but thereabouts, it seems like I, my my brain, my body's like, okay, time for time for something else. Let's go do something else. So, yeah, I've I've caught on to how I work now. And that seems to be about about the time frame that I like to do something different. And I know I keep mentioning, but I mean, I have no spouse. I have no babies, no young kids. Um, my kiddo already flew the nest. It's just me. It's just me. So the only one that is holding me back is me from experiencing, from adventuring. So I'm, I'm like this close. Next month starts my full-time van life. So yeah, that is exciting. That is exciting. I just, <laughs> if I could stand up here and do a little happy dance, that's what I would be doing, guys. I would be like... My feet just tapping everywhere, doing the, the happy dance, the, the happy feet like that movie, the penguin movie. Whew. 
but yeah, that's what I will be doing. Oh my goodness. It's such a pretty day, but it's already getting really hot here. And we're supposed to be about 100 degrees today. This is like, oh my God, it's so hot. <laughs> yes, yes I am. Yes I am. Oh, let me see. Oh, Bonita, hi. I didn't even see your, your comment pop up. Sorry about that. Let's see, pennies to dollars. So nice to have less to maintain and clean. Oh my goodness. It sure is, it sure is. And then Kathy, yes, Zell. We're still good to go on Zell. <laughs> um, but uh, Bonita, oh my gosh. I know you have experienced the, the RV life, the more minimalist life. Um, you've always been frugal, super smart, everything like that. From the videos that I see, the stories you tell, you grew up having, uh, having to learn all that stuff. But I'm like, <laughs> the minimal, minimizing everything. Oh my gosh. It's, it's nice. And I'm ready to be by myself, living by myself for a while. I think that's what I'm missing. I, I need some solitude. I'm usually more of a person that likes to keep to myself, but like I want to be actually living by myself for a while. That's that's what I've been feeling for a while. So that's what I'm going to go do, you guys. And a great option is to do van life. For the budget, for the adventure, to have my privacy, etc., 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 to live adventurous, more freedom on the cheap. <laughs> So that's my conclusion to all my uh, my going back and forth about what should I do, what should I do, where should I go, what blah, 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 blah. This is my tiny house on wheels and wherever I want to go. <laughs> I'm not that adventurous either, but like for the majority of the people... Just living in a van, just being interested in living in a van, a car, whatever, traveling even once or twice a year is way more adventurous than the, the average person does anyway. But I still don't consider myself that adventurous. Even though people tell me, oh my gosh, you're so adventurous. You you done this, you do that. And I don't really see it. <laughs> but I guess, I guess to... The majority of the people, I probably so, the, the norm, the norm that a lot of people don't even go outside of their, of their cities, of their states. So I guess that's true. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. So Bonita, I was going to, I was going to be like, well, um, what's that RV park that you stayed at and, um. Also, because you had mentioned that the, the storage for the, to park your RV was super cheap there. But then I remembered you said it was like a, a 55 and up community. So I can't do that. But I know it's way south of Texas. So I probably don't want to do that either. Not yet anyway. I don't know, guys. I'm just like, I just start daydreaming. <laughs> Hi, Ada. How are you? Benson Grove RV. Oh, okay. Let me screenshot that and kind of check it out. I don't think I can I can go. It's probably for the more senior. But I screenshotted it anyway just just to check it out. Palmview, Texas. Okay. How have you been, Ada? Kathy says, I've never lived alone. Um here we go. Always had to take care of spouses, kids, parents, or anyone else that needed a safe place. My time will come eventually. I know. That's how I kind of feel. That's how I kind of felt, feel. And I'm just like, you know what? I just have to do it. Because if I don't, I will. 20 years will go by. 30 years will go by. And then 
I won't have the same physical ability to go and adventure and do all these walks and hikes and climbs and I don't know I don't know if I'm going to be here next year or not. I don't know if I'll be here 10 years, 20 years from now. So you know, not to be all negative on that end, but I don't know, tomorrow's not guaranteed, so I better start living. Get busy living or get busy dying. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. Let's see. Ada says, trying to get adjusted in Florida. Well, good. Good deal. And let's see. I know you can't go wrong with Florida. Florida is beautiful. It's so beautiful. And pennies to dollars. 20% can be under 50. Oh, I had no idea. Or 55. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. Huh. Watch out for bears. Many places closed. It sure is. Huh. Yeah, I've been to Florida once. And I don't remember what time of the year. It was before it got really, really hot and humid. It was gorgeous. My goodness, it was so green and beautiful. Gorgeous. Watch out for the bears. Ada. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to be going in the middle of nowhere like that. I like to be I like to be in cities. I like to be in cities. Um the first thing that I'm going to try is quartzite. I'm going to try that next year. I think January whenever they do their the the RTR, I'll be there for a few days, few weeks, I don't know, however long I can I can be there because I know from what I uh I hear other people talk about it gets really, really crowded, and I don't like to be all crowded like that. But I do want to go experience it, meet some of you guys, because I know some of you guys actually go to those meetups. And I'm not the type to really be going, because I'm not that social. <laughs> social anxiety. But once I get to know people, uh, I'm more comfortable being around them and talking to them. But it's just like that initial, like, ooh, I'm shy. Don't look at me. <laughs> so, but I definitely want to go do that. So I will. I will do that in January. I don't know if some of you guys can can go too. I will see you guys there if you if you end up going to Quartzsite. But it's good to know those loopholes. 20% can be 55 or less. Also, like I was looking into um, when we first moved here to, to the Barstow area. Well, before I was looking into purchasing like a little single wide uh, mobile home. And the nicest one that they have here, the nicest mobile home park is a 55 and up community. And they said... Um, Normally, if you're living with somebody that is 55 and older, then you can live there, especially if you're like a caregiver, then you can do that. It just has to have somebody that is 55 and older that lives there. Then, of course, they each park has their own regulations, stipulations, whatever. But I thought it was just strictly like 55 and up. No, no younger crowd, no kids, no nothing. I had no clue that you actually like there is a loophole. Other people can actually live there too. You definitely want to do the, the WTR and the RTR next year. I do too. My goodness, I do too. So I shouldn't say I do too. I will. I will be there. I will be there. I will be there. God willing, I will be there. And I think I'm going to bring a lot of extras. Because I know they have their... Um, some kind of area where you can donate some things and then have other people um, get what they need from it. So that's how I can donate, get rid of some of my extra stuff. I can just put it in that pile and you guys or whoever else um, can benefit from that. And I don't think I need anything, but there might be something cool in there that I never knew I, I needed, right? I never knew I wanted. And I might snatch one or two things up, but I definitely, I think I'm going to be taking a lot of my extra stuff for van life and donating it 
So that's going to be nice. Let's see, Teresa. Um, I feel the need to move every two years, but I'm a new grandma too. Oops, sorry, I pressed something. Uh, so I need to stay in my current home and keep my permanent home base. I'll take some adventures though. I know it. I know it's going to be hard for me to leave that little baby. It really is. It's hard enough for me to leave my own daughter. Like I want to be so close to her, not in the same area because I like my space. She likes her space. You know, they're, they're a growing family, so they need their own little thing going. But I like to be at least in the same state or somewhere nearing the state somewhere within like two ish three hours away is like perfect like at, at the farthest as far as having my own home base but yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to leave that little baby and my baby <laughs> it's gonna be so hard but i need to do it what do they joke uh, i need to put me first i need to put me first <laughs> Yeah, so it's time for me. It's definitely time for me. Just saying that out loud sounds sounds kind of selfish just because we've been trained to to put others first, but it's not selfish to take care of yourself, to indulge in things that you need. I mean, I already I already did my time, right? I I was married, I raised my kid. Everything it's just me now, so it's time for me to enjoy me. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Pennies to dollars. That's what the office told me, unless they, they're, oh yeah, unless they were wrong. There are, oh, there are grandparents here raising kids? Okay. Yeah, I would assume, like, if if that happened, you're already a, a resident there. Um, you're living there, and you have to take care of your grandkids. They're not going to be like, no, you have to get out, leave, right? I wouldn't think so. So that's really good to know. There's always a loophole. That's what I tell Cora. There's always a loophole, girl. There's always a loophole. Figure it out. There's always a way to do something. If you really want to do something, you'll figure out a way to do it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Wait, more than... <laughs> More than likely, if my mom would have agreed to live in that uh, 55 and older community, that's where we would have had our home base. We would have just called that a day and then I could go out and venture and do whatever. But I think for some reason she gets nervous. She's like, I don't want I don't want to be in those kind of communities. I don't want people watching me. I don't want them to be all up in my business. I want to be like, I'm like, why wouldn't they be all up in your business? That makes no sense. It's not like... The government's coming to get you, girl. <laughs> I don't know. You left New Jersey, left everything behind, starting a, starting simple at a home base, prepping for bad weather. And yes, definitely bad weather. And got to fix my van and wander around. My goodness, yeah. Yeah, those hurricanes, those hurricanes. But, like, I call mine my shit hit the fan van. <laughs> so you yeah definitely prep your prep your van girl prep your van have it ready to go for those those times where where you need to hit the road and kind of go for a little while a week or so however long the the hurricane or the crazy weather and just go go adventure somewhere you know go have fun <laughs> it don't take much but Start saving for a little bit of gas, right? A little bit of gas and you have all your waters. I know you super prepper, so you probably already have everything that you absolutely need for a survival situation. Let me see. Ada says, I was told, uh, they st oh, the storms and tornado season. Oh, Lord Jesus. I know it. I know it. It's time. It's time. But I know you a prepper, girl. I already know. I already know. And pennies to dollars. Miss Bonita says, you're kind of a loner, so I just want to do what I want here and haven't had any issues. No one's in my business. Exactly. Exactly. I think a lot of people that constantly have issues with, it's just because 
maybe i mean it could happen that you just have crappy ass neighbors but if it like keeps keeps on every situation everywhere you go yeah i don't know you might look in the mirror but if you mind your own business and nobody bothers you people don't typically bother me at all at all if they do i go somewhere else go somewhere else that's my solution <laughs> move on move on i don't need to deal with you ah tim <laughs> tim tim is asking um are you doing the fake van life again? Yes, yes. I'm going to go back to fake van life for the foreseeable future. Maybe six months, maybe more. I don't know, Tim. <laughs> fake van life coming to you next month. Next month, I'm going to start full-time van life for a while. I don't know how long. Until I feel like doing something else. You're a people person. <laughs> or you go nuts. Oh my goodness. I'm not. I'm not Ada. Some people are. They have to have that interaction and everything. For me, like little little spurts here and there, having a short conversation or once every week, two, three weeks. Like I'm cool. Like I don't need more than that. And I know some people need that daily, daily interaction, talk, everything. Like physically being right there. Cause I have my phone. I talk to to family. Um I entertain myself with my phone. I can go out and about and like, I'm cool with that. It doesn't, I, I don't need that much interaction. Like I'm not, I'm not that, uh, oh, what do you call it? Extroverted? <laughs> oh, hi mom. Oh, Tim says fake van life, Sienna squad. Yeah. Hashtag fake van life, Sienna squad. <laughs> Coming at you next month, Tim. Heck yeah. My fake van life is going to be living in Cora's apartment, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I will be spending a lot of my days inside Cora's apartment. But yeah, officially full-time. Full-time van life for sure. Mom, Tim says hi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I will be going in there, hanging out with her, especially after uh, baby Dia. That's what I'm calling her now. Baby Dia is born. I'm going to try to get as much as I can in before I have to hit the road again. I'm so excited. Ah. See, Ada says just a bit, but not to invite home baits. Oh, okay. They might steal my shit, hit the fan. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I know it, right? I know it. I know you have to be more hush hush of what you have because what's funny is people will be like well I'll be going I know where I'll be going you know should hit the fan situation I'll be going to your house and meanwhile they're calling you crazy right but they want all your preps if something happens shit <laughs> yeah you got to start forming your your shit hit the fan crew club compound meeting point like okay i know this person they prep i know this person they prep and we're kind of like in a general facility so if 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 that time comes and i know we we got to work together because that that lone wolf mentality that that won't get you very far unless you're extremely skilled and have the physical abilities and knowledge and everything but shoot ada <laughs> you're you're highly uh medically skilled girl so we're gonna need you we're gonna need you girl i don't have that many skills <laughs> that's why i have to i have to get preps because i don't have that many skills girl let's see walmart gas situations have cheaper just so you know oh okay i mean walmart gas stations have cheaper prices they sure do the the murphy murphy usa or something some of them have actually tricked me they're not actually affiliated with the walmart thing when you get the the gift card to get whatever cents off each gallon they're they name it something similar to the the murphy thing 
but they're not actually affiliated. So you can't use that, that gift card to pay for your gas and to get that few cents off every gallon or whatever. Some of them, you got to watch them, but they're still pretty cheap. So I still feel up there anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I might not be having much food, but I have a shitload of pew pew and ammos. <laughs> That's one way to get food. You won't go without food with that. <laughs> Somebody will want you to guard, Tim, and they'll give you food for protection. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the town sheriff. Let's see, Ada says, in a shit hit the fan, we sometimes for what they have to do. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have that, the excess food, excess water, or a way to get water, to filter water. Then you can trade, bargain, right? That we're gonna go back to the olden days where we gotta bargain for things. We gotta swap out trading. Like, okay, you know how to do this. I'm gonna give you a, a cup of rice. I'm gonna give you a pound of a bag of rice, beans, macaroni, a can of tuna, whatever it needs to be. We, we gotta trade something, some chickens, something. Cause I, I need what you can offer. So let's let's make a deal, let's make a deal. So if you have extra, I guess that's what I need to do, right? Get extra rice, beans, macaroni, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I have to make deals. I have to make deals, but I got to have different stashes so they don't come steal my stuff, right? Because <laughs> then they're going to know the bargain queen. Oh my goodness, Tim. Yeah, I'll vote for Tim. Tim for sheriff. <laughs> you got my vote, Tim. You got my vote. Town handyman and sheriff. You're going to need the multi-skills, right? Definitely. Multi-skills. <laughs> For sure. Kind of like in van life, each item that you have in here needs to be multi-purpose. Needs to be multi-purpose. At least two different things that it can do for you. Otherwise, you need to figure something else out. And it's taking too much valuable, valuable space. <coughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> See, I took my, my gun safety course. Oh, nice. I need to do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, now got to apply for my carry permit next month. Nice. Nice. Heck, yeah. Don't mess with Ada. <laughs> she going to get you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll have the, I'll have to make, be in charge of some kind of a trading post, Tim. That's what I could be in charge of, a trading post. <laughs> you can keep everything in order. <laughs> what else are we doing? Who does arts and crafts? Who does some kind of training? Who, uh, Ada can, can teach us how to, how to do some first aid stuff. <laughs> Man. Everybody has value, man. Everybody has value for sure. Oh my goodness. Ah. Yeah, because who doesn't like a, a nice flea market, right? Will be the, the mercantile. Like those old, uh, those older shows. A Walmart with a gas station. Girl, yes. A Walmart with a gas station. It, it seems to be just about everywhere but California. Eight is the town doctor. Heck yeah. <laughs> See where we're getting our shit hit the fan crew right here. <laughs> you signed up for the volunteer red cross if needed awesome heck yeah you can be in charge of the red cross in our in our shit hit the fan town girl you're gonna be the go-to for sure anybody needs medical attention anybody needs some kind of treatment anybody needs some kind of training go see ada <laughs> but yeah kathy um 
yeah, it, the places that I have lived in, like the Oklahoma, um, Texas, I can't remember if North Carolina had them like that. But typically, there's the, the same complex shopping area. You'll have the Walmart. And in the same complex, you'll have a gas station. And they're affiliated together. You can um, put money, add money to a gift card. And it says you can save... Uh, I want to say like three cents a gallon just by using a Walmart gift card and using that to pay for your gas you can save that so that's that's what I used to do I don't really see it here but that's what I used to do oh thanks Ada yeah look just with the regular curtain curtain rod thing I just kind of bent it and made it go up a little bit higher that way it blocks a little bit more, but it's still like, I don't know, maybe a couple inches. But I don't really have my lights and my phone blasting like crazy music, all that kind of stuff. Like when it's time to, to go to bed and relax, the most that I have is for just a short little while, I'd be on my phone or texting or calling or something, kind of wind down and that's about it. Like when it's time to go to bed, it's time to go to bed, like that's it. And I don't go too crazy. I try to be more stealthy when it's time to, to hit the hay. Oh, mom. Kathy dice buenos dias. She'll probably... Well, I don't know why my... Um, my chat won't won't show. I have it to where it will replay. I've pressed that button and it just does not replay after my live streams, which kind of sucks. Because that way you guys can actually read all the comments afterwards. And, and it's more exciting, right, to see all the comments pop up and you understand why we're laughing or what we're doing. But I don't know why it doesn't pop up on mine. Yeah, the more stealthy, the better. That's a great thing for of a minivan. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, and I finally got my uh, um, wind deflectors, like they call it. I call it rain guards. But I can crack my my four windows here and, you know, have the, the inch or two and have some ventilation. And then the very back ones that kind of pop out, those are manual, thank goodness, because Cora had a minivan that you had to actually start the vehicle or put in the accessory, and then it was like a... Um, you had to press a button and open it that way. You couldn't just manually open it. And that kind of sucked because like she had to come all the way up front and turn her, her ignition and then open that up. But same thing with the moonroof she had. I mean, you have to be making sure you had power. And the one that I previously had, the minivan I previously had, it was manual in the back like this one. And all you do is just pop it up, pop it open. Perfect. You don't have to show that you're in the vehicle, nothing. Like you don't have to start it. You don't have to call attention to yourself. Just pop it open manually, close it when you need to, and you're good to go. So yeah, she has my, my older van, which now she's able to just pop those open as she pleases. And see a wing guard set of four, you can crack your windows on Amazon. Yeah, for sure. That that is one of the necessities. I high necessity for living in your van, camping out of your van, emergency living in your van. Definitely having these to have some ventilation for sure. Cuz you're going to have those nasty rainy days. Let's see. Desert Adventure in Arizona. Hello, hello. Well, hello. Kathy says, Ada, I'll be your assistant. Worked as an EMT and nurse aide for over 30 years. Heck yeah, we're getting our we're getting our crew here. Okay, sign sign it up, guys. Sign it up. <laughs> Cause there there is no lone wolf here. We all gotta we all gotta get together and set it up, guys, for sure. Yeah. Way back in my naive prepper days, I thought the lone wolf, heck yeah, the gray man, the lone wolf, the that kind of situation, like I'm gonna do it all by myself. Heck yeah, girl, bye. <laughs> so young, dumb, ignorant, everything, girl. I have no skills. What? What am I? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna survive? I don't even know how to 
grow anything. I don't even know how to forage like wild whatever. If I get something poisonous, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. <laughs> I don't know. I need people. I need people, guys. I need people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we're going to have our own town. What's our town going to be called, guys? What's our shit hit the fan town going to be called? We need something cool. Oh my God. Steven Oki, Kathy, you gotta get some pho. Catch you later. All right, thanks for stopping by, Tam. Go check out Tim's uh, channel, which he has um, members now. So go, go be a member in Tim's channel too. Let's see. Yeah, last time I was with Cora, we made sure to find a Vietnamese restaurant and we had some pho. We, we had the, the Vietnamese sandwich. That is one of my favorites. The, some kind of baguette, some kind of bread. Oh my God, and everything. That is my go-to. That is my go-to. Let's see. Kay Kennedy, we ready. <laughs> Community is so important, man. Community is so important. Add tourniquets. <laughs> we never know. We can assist in an emergency on the road. Oh, true that. True that. Have your big uh, medical kit. Yeah, yeah, Kathy. Make sure you have your your big medical kit when you hit the road, for sure. My extent is uh, band-aids. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get a hold of you, ladies. Oh, what do I do? I'm bleeding out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know like the basic stuff, guys. I'm just messing with you. Um, my wife, Oki, loves Vietnamese sandwiches. Oh, I think that is that is my favorite. That is my favorite. I love bread. And I like the, the pickled veggies that they have there. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. Cora will get the, the pho, the beef pho. And I'll get the sandwich and then we just, we share it. We'll get, I'll get half the soup and I'll get half the sandwich and we, we just go to town. We go to town. Ada says, uh, check with the city and get free courses, CPR, medical. Um, we never know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Good thing you said that, Ada. That is so true. Especially like you mentioned the, the Red Cross. If you go volunteer, they'll train you. They'll do all that for free. Go. Go check that out for sure. Tim, LOL. I guess the O, that O, have to stop by your house. <laughs> Steve, when I head back to Illinois. And Desert Adventures says, Vanning with Ada. Yup. Bring your Vietnamese yummy. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Food. Food is just yummy in general, right? We always keep talking about food on here. Because <laughs> it's lunchtime. Brunch lunchtime. That is so true. Anyone can save a life. That is very true. That's true. At least to, to have them hold on for, for a while. Enough to get to an actual emergency room a doctor somewhere right to be able to to do the basics to to sustain their life until you get them to where you need to get them that's true I thought my allergies were dying down, which they, they have calmed down a little bit. But this morning, I still woke up all swollen. My, I look like I have like 10 years of no sleep, baggy eyes down here. I'm like, oh my God. Jesus, help me take these allergies away. Uh, 
Oh, and a little uh, update with Cora's pregnancy this morning. She texts me. She says she's fine. The baby's fine. But they went to the, the ER because they tell her, if you don't feel your baby kicking so many kicks per hour, per day or whatever, then come to the ER just to make sure everything's okay. So she hadn't really been feeling the baby kicking or anything. And she went to the ER and they checked her, I guess did the ultrasound and saw that the baby was moving, kicking around. She was good. She's good. The baby Dia is good. But for some reason, Cora is just not feeling it. Cora is not feeling the baby move and kick and all that. And um, Cora says, maybe it's my fibro. Maybe it's something where I'm just not really feeling her. But she's moving around. She's a happy go lucky baby just kicking moving doing whatever she wants to do in there so but i told her i told cora that i would feel cora move when she was in my belly i would fear her feel her move from time to time but i didn't feel every single thing every time she turned and moved i didn't really feel it either but i did feel enough like you you can even see like some areas where they're like actually pushing and your belly just like the little ball moves and does all that like those are obvious ones but to to feel Cora like constantly move and move I didn't really feel it either but yeah just to update you guys on Cora's status everything is good we're still um maybe towards the end of of next month mid to end of next month then um they want to induce her just kind of a time frame 38 39 weeks they want to induce her if the baby hasn't um came out by then so it's almost time where are we at okay here we go yes keeping an airway clear checking breathing pulse and do cpr as needed yep exactly I'm gonna sleep on the floor till I start setting mine up. <laughs> oh man. The ER is here in uh, Tucson. They're very slow, maybe under staffing problems. That's what it seems to be. Even in like, um, oh, sorry, I missed, I missed some of these. Anyone, okay, can save a life. You're all set up, Dio, with the van set up. Well, I have everything that I need for sure. I have everything that I can possibly need. I just need to actually set it up. And I can't set it up until I finish moving um, the rest of my things. So I'm going to pack up my van, the back of this van. I call it pickup mode. I'm going to put everything back here that's left in the RV. And then drive to Oklahoma to my storage unit, unload everything, then take a day, two days, and see exactly what I want to load in here, which will be very minimal to just give me the most space as possible, just with the essentials and then just sprinkle a little bit of what I want in there and then call that good. That's what I'm going to do. And once I set that up, um, I will do a tour of what I actually um, set up. So full-time van life, actual setup, minivan, camper van tour for you guys. So that'll happen next month, sometime, sometime soon. And then I'll have more, more to show you about like actual day-to-day -day van life. But yeah, as far as what I actually need, I have every single thing and then some. Like I have enough to, to put in a house. <laughs> I have enough for a house, a travel trailer, and a van. Like I have enough. I have everything that I need and then some. So I'm... I'm extremely blessed with that. I just have to pick and see what exactly I want to put in here and use for the time being. And then once I, I travel around some and then I happen to be back in the uh, Oklahoma area, then I can switch stuff up and trade my things. Like if I, for example, if I have a cot in here and it's not really working out, well then I will just fold the cot up and put it in storage and then have my bed on the floor vice versa same thing with like the the coolers the fridges if i decide to that i need more space then i'll take my bigger cooler and try that out for a while and just kind of kind of do that and see and see and i will be sharing all that with you guys as i go along 
All right, let's see. But yeah, understaffing, ERs, um, stores, restaurants, everything, everything for sure. I think um, a lot more people just don't want to work. They don't want to do the nine to five anymore. <laughs> They're sick of it. They're sick of it. Oh my goodness. And send hugs to Cora for me. I will. Thanks, Ada. Um, Dia, you can't go for it. No traveling till Cora drops the bomb. I know it. I know it. But I will be moving into my van. So full-time van life is in effect starting next month. But yeah, I'm going to stay close. I'm going to stay close to Cora. Or basically like right next to Cora until after. So end of next month to very early beginning. If it happens to go to June, we'll see. We'll see. But I think the end of next month or so is when the baby's going to pop out. Finally, I'm like, I'm ready to meet her. <laughs> but I'll be staying over there until then. But yeah, I'll be I'll be officially in the van. I'm giving you the van fever. Start the setup. Girl, yes, yes. I know I have it every single time and I still watch van life tour videos and it's like, oh my gosh. Ooh, I need that. Ooh, I want that. Ooh, I want to try that. Oh no, I don't I don't need all that. <laughs> And then I just start like judging their what what they have like oh no I can't I can't do all that or oh that that is a good idea I might try that. <laughs> uh, I bet many people who lost their their jobs during COVID became nomads and never went back. Man, once you get a taste of that freedom and realizing that you don't need very much to to live comfortable. I mean, it might not be luxury, obviously, like in a, in a van, you ain't going to have all the luxury amenities, but to not have to worry of, you know, hustling and bustling for so many hours a day, you can actually work part time or you can actually work two, three, four days out of the, the week instead of working six to seven days out the week. You know, you can like slow down and actually enjoy your life. I can't blame them for not wanting to go back. Many blessings to you both. Thanks, Ada. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go back to that kind of lifestyle either. At all. <laughs> Hustling and bustling. Going and going and going. No. I've enjoyed working the, the part-time, the, the hustle, the side hustle lifestyle. I've actually enjoyed that more. So that's what I'm sticking to, you guys. That's what I'm sticking to. The, the side hustles, part-time type of work, that's what I'm doing. As long as it pays the bills and I can save, you know, every month a little bit, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need that much. I have excess. I have excess. I don't need anything else. <laughs> I don't need more things. I need, uh, what I actually need is the, the gas money, maintenance money, road money food money cell phone money like that that i need but like all the extra things i don't i don't really need that i have nowhere to put it i have nowhere to put it i don't have a home base yet which will be coming in the future for sure but until then my my things will be in a storage unit and in here oh lord my fever is jumping but it's hard. Just relocated. But I'll get there. Yeah, girl. I mean, shoot. Just just take a nice a nice day trip to the beach, a weekend trip to the beach. Get your uh get your fix there. Stealth camp by the beach. Then you'll get your fix real quick and you'll be happy to go back to to your regular kitchen and shower and all that. <laughs> Get your get your day or two fix a week. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would do. I'm over here like just thinking, daydreaming. I, I'm Ada now, and I'm gonna go. Go, not the weekend maybe not the weekend because it, it'll get really busy really full at the beach but i'm like okay 
if I was Ada in her shoes, if I was close to the beach, <laughs> girl, I'd be going a Tuesday, Wednesday, chilling out at the beach, sunbathing. Um, yeah. Ooh, I can already picture that. As I'm roasting here in the desert, I'm like, oh, I need, I need some beach weather. <laughs> oh my goodness. Having my drink, my coconut water, and just watching, just people watching, enjoying. Oh, uh, that, that would be fun. Oh my gosh, I'm getting sweaty. Yeah, like my, I always say my perfect paradise, somewhere more tropical where I can hang a hammock, be by some water, preferably the ocean, and just like chill all day, the majority of the time, in the hammock, swing back and forth, and have my drink, and then just people watch, and go take a, a walk around there, enjoy good food. That's my paradise, guys. That's what I picture as far as my paradise. <laughs> What else do you need, right? What else do you need? Except, you know, obviously some family, some loved ones, some friends, you know. But as far as like the physical, the area, the scenario, what else do I need? Not a dang thing. Having that nice beach life on a hammock, people watching, taking walks in the beach, enjoying the, the nice sunny weather. Yeah. That's that's what I picture. <laughs> yeah, and eventually if uh Cora and her family move to a a bigger uh place because they only have they have like a very small one bedroom but if they end up maybe later this year next year whenever they end up getting somewhere where it has multiple bedrooms and um, they've already offered where I can store my things there and I can have like my my home base there until I find something so I might take them up on their offer with that and just kind of you know stay there a few months out the year help her out and then go adventure but yeah, they said that they'll have a bedroom for me if I want it, but just kind of temporarily. I don't want to just like live there and stay there, you know, it's just seasonal. It's seasonal, guys, because I, I like my space. I want my space. I want my privacy. I want my own. Let's see. I will. Thanks, Dia. You're awesome. Do your thing. Do you make yourself happy? Time flies and we miss out on a lot. We sure do. Time goes by so fast. My goodness. It sure does. It sure does. That's what I keep noticing. The, the, the older I get, the more time flies. And when I was younger, I couldn't wait to be old. Older. I couldn't wait to be a grown-up, an adult, and do whatever I wanted. <laughs> Little do you know, you, you know, you get married, you have kids, you you ain't gonna do what you want. You gotta raise them kiddos. <laughs> it's all about them. But now, shoot. Yeah, now it's my time. Let's see. We enjoy the mountains and the pine trees in the summer. Camping around wild horses as they graze around us. Oh, that sounds beautiful. That's another thing I love. I love like the, the mountain towns. It's so gorgeous with all those trees, the scenery, the green, the rivers, the lakes. <sighs> beautiful it's beautiful those are my my top two go-to's not so much the desert but I do love a mountain area with seeing the rivers it's gorgeous gorgeous but I don't know how how good my allergies seasonal allergies would do there but shoot if I didn't have to worry about that I'd be in some like small high altitude mountain town part of the year and then the other part I would be at the beach I would alternate. <laughs> give her kids advice. I give my myself and my kids stay on a budget for living in a home base. Sometimes you gotta. Okay, 
Sorry, I had a call coming in. <laughs> um, yeah, you make it work starting small for sure. Definitely have the, what they call, they've been calling the exit plan because we're going to get older. We're going to get physical limitations and it's just, it, it's going to happen. We're, we're going to need somewhere to, to call home for a while. And you need that, that address. You need the, the medical, um, you need to be close to your doctor's hospital, like, you know, later in life, it's it's just a reality. It is what it is, and you're going to need something like that. So, if I haven't purchased anything by then, my my exit plan will be to to have a little travel trailer and call it a day at an RV park. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> Easy as that for me. But yeah, I've I've been teaching Cora to be frugal, to live below her means. Um, the The goal has always been to save at least fifty percent of whatever money you get. Try to save at least fifty percent. I know sometimes you can't, but but try to save fifty percent. Live off very little, and then just kind of do some sinking funds for all the fun stuff. Have your fun money, but emergency money. And do all kinds of stuff like that for sure. Enjoy your life, but but be smart about it, and have a backup plan to your backup plan. <laughs> and then for us specifically, Corey and I, we we made a. It sounds sounds kind of weird, but we made a pact. <laughs> we talked about it like we have to have a vehicle that we can at least live decently, comfortably, if we ever needed to. And we came to the conclusion that a minivan is like is perfect you know it's nice to have something bigger but at least a minivan is what we're gonna have as far as our daily drivers our shit hit the fan vans because we're gonna need that if whatever the situation happens you can at least put a nice comfortable bed there put a potty some storage some food some cooking stuff like that is the bare minimum that we want is a minimum is a minivan so we both have minivans sienna squads <clears throat> I am roasting here, you guys. Oh my god. Open my Woo. Get some of that fresh air. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go inside the RV but yeah thank you guys so much for stopping by and commenting and joining my live I'm gonna go ahead and end the live now thank y'all for being here I'm already over here more than an hour now talking to you guys which I love I enjoy it yeah have a great day you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday um, Thank you for the, the thumbs up and all the great advice. And yeah, we definitely need to have our own shit hit the fan type of community because it, it's always there. It's always there. <laughs> but thank you all so much and be expecting more actual full-time van life uh, videos. I'm still thinking, like I had mentioned earlier, I'm thinking of doing, videoing a bunch of clips throughout the week and then kind of putting something together post it on like Wednesdays and then have the the live stream on Sundays so at least two good videos uh, a week for you guys and then if I feel like just doing a a spontaneous live stream and show you what's going on or something I, I might do that too but I think that's what I'm going to be doing now so we'll see we'll see how that works I don't know I don't know we'll see how that works but yeah, thank you guys so much. Let's see what Ada put. Oh, Ada. Thanks and sorry I've been AWOL. Was going through a lot. I'm here with you today. Yeah, I know, honey. I know. It's okay. I see your videos. But I'm glad you're doing a lot better. You're in a way better place. A way better uh, 
state, I should say too. <laughs> but yeah, one day at a time and enjoy it. Go to the beach, girl. Go do your your day or two road trip and enjoy that van life. Even if it's like a day, a short little day, it don't matter. Go do you, girl. All right, thank y'all so much. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Oh, and before, before I leave, next Sunday, I might actually be traveling. So I don't know if I will be able to do the live stream, but I hope, I hope. If not, then I will put in the community post that I cannot do the live stream, but I will see. I'll see what's going on for sure. But just so you guys know, um, there might be a chance that I will not be able to go live next Sunday, but I'm hoping I still can, at least for a little while. But yeah before i forget <laughs> just wanted to make sure to let you guys know that but all right have a good sunday bye guys